Yeah, so it's finally time to make things more lively here. Geometry node simulation has been successfully imported. Good! Then go for it! Understood. Initiating simulation sequence. Perfect. Now let's make a video about it. Hello everyone, Akarish here. It's been quite some time again, huh? Last month I had my first ever university exams and just didn't have any time to work on the game or videos. To get back to it, I decided to make one or two small vids on other game dev themes, and this is one of them. Today I'm going to tell you about my journey and experience with Blender's geometry nodes and why I think they're really, really cool. Let's get to it then! It all started in 2021 with Blender 2.92 or something, when they introduced Geometry Nodes, a node-based system for modifying and creating procedural geometry. It sounded really cool, so I decided to check it out, as I usually do. I didn't find much use for it at that time. Sure, it was pretty good in distributing geometry in volumes and on surfaces. For example, I quickly found out that you can really easily generate stylized tree leaves using it. I even created a simple tree generator, which I used for Exolian's Sky City map. Remember Exolian? That was a cool game, huh? But apart from that, it wasn't very useful for me as a game developer and content creator. It all has changed though in June 2023, with the release of Blender 3.6, where on top of geometry nodes, they added simulation nodes. And oh boy, that was a game changer. Simulation nodes allow you to create dynamic geometry, which can be, well, simulated. Who would have thought? Basically, you have these two nodes, the input and the output. Each frame, everything between the two nodes is processed and sent to the output, and therefore, render. But in addition to that, the result is also sent back to the input, so the system can modify it for the next frame. So, for example, if you want to make a cube move in some direction, you can just insert a set position node into the simulation zone, tweak the offset, and look here, the cube is moving! You can also store so-called attributes, basically variables, which can be actively modified at runtime to simulate various physics effects or change pretty much any other aspect of the result. Combining the system with other features of GeoNodes, one can get some pretty complicated behaviors, which has been proven many times by people from Blender's community, who create these awesome and sometimes crazy simulations. So, let's have a quick look at my favorite use cases of geometry nodes I came across during my YouTube slash game dev journey. My current main project, Zaris mainly uses geometry nodes for generating tree crowns, bushes, and some other more weird kinds of foliage. This works by distributing points on the surface of the source mesh, which is usually a scaled icosphere. Then these points get converted into leaves meshes, simple planes with textures, which are assigned random scale and rotation, of course with some control exposed to the user. This approach allows me to really quickly model foliage variations, which are essential for creating somewhat believable landscapes. Apart from generating foliage, I'm also using GeoNodes for creating procedural rocks, though this approach has some flaws. Mainly, it's these weird lighting artifacts when imported into Unreal. Hope I will find a solution for this one in the near future, though. Anyway, here is the node setup for this. It's just subdividing geometry and offsetting it using some procedural noise patterns. The effect is significantly weakened on the top facing parts to make sure they are walkable. And probably my favorite use case of geometry nodes in Zaris is terrain generation. If you watched my previous video, you already know that this whole new terrain was first procedurally generated using geo nodes. Basically, I'm using a bunch of noise nodes with different parameters to first create a random-looking island map, 
and then add more detail and biome variation to the landscape. And the most beautiful part about all of this is the fact that geometry nodes use pretty much the same set of nodes as shaders do. This means that I can very easily copy my whole terrain generation setup into a shader and bake it out as a height map to use in Unreal or pretty much any other software with landscape height map support. I can also edit this terrain later on using Unreal's default landscape tools, making this approach even more useful. But enough about Zaris for now. I didn't tell you, but at the end of last summer, I took part in my first 3D challenge, the Boss Fight 3D Challenge, hosted by Clint, who is also known as Finisher. Dan, how do you even pronounce that? Anyway, the challenge was a lot of fun and I learned a lot from it. Even though I didn't have as much time to work on it as I would want. This especially shows up in the character's hair. By the way, this orange eyes girl wearing a night frame battle suit is my OC, and her name is Amber. Maybe you'll see more of her in the future. Alright, back to geometry nodes. In this relatively small project, I managed to use geo nodes quite a bunch of times. I used them to position these close background buildings and randomly place antennas on their rooftops to avoid repetition. I also used them to generate this simple explosion, but it's nothing to write home about. What is actually interesting, though, is this engine trail simulation. While Engine 5 is just an icosphere with very offsetted vertices, the smoke trail is a little bit more complicated. At first, it places a vertex at the trail source mesh position, and then enters the simulation zone, where every frame a new vertex is extruded from the previous one to the source mesh current position. After that, the new vertex receives initial velocity in the direction of engine fire, and a simple air drag is applied to every other vertex. Then, all vertices are moved according to their velocities. Also, there is this add node, which gives the smoke a constant left motion. This is needed because this whole scene is actually mostly static, and I'm trying to fake motion by moving everything in one direction. Except the character, of course. So, as a result of the simulation zone, we're getting this rather blocking looking line, which we then subdivide, convert into a curve, give it some actual geometry, convert the geometry into a volume, then back to geometry, then apply some smooth shading and transparent shading with some Fresnel, and here you go! Easy, right? I am very happy with how this simulation turned out, even though it is relatively simple. Also, it seems like after working on this small project, I finally got into this whole geometry node simulation thing, and started using it way more often. A great example of that can be found in my previous video, where I used this cool anime style cutting effects, which were in fact also a geometry node simulation. This node system is way more complicated than the previous ones, so I won't try and quickly explain how it works, but rather just put the Blender file on my Discord server for anyone curious to figure out on their own. What I can say is that this system has all of the useful parameters exposed to the user making it very easy to use in other videos. And with some clever combinations of other video effects, you can get some pretty satisfying shots. For example, you can add bloom to the cuts, fade the object you're cutting to white, clap on some vignette and desideration, add a cool sound effect, and here you go! An awesome shot I watched like a hundred times. It's not that hard, actually. By the way, I'm wondering how such sound effects are made. Guess it would be cool to try and learn how to do such things in the future. Maybe even make a video about it. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, you can use geometry nodes for plenty of different video effects. Like, as a more simple example, these speed lines are used in my boss fight challenge shot. They are really easy to implement and add a lot to the final work. Alright! To sum things up, I was having a lot of fun learning and using geometry nodes, so I decided to make a video about them. It is the one you are currently watching. But I didn't want to just tell you about things I did before, I wanted to do something special for this video, something I can give you to play around with. And so, after some thinking, I decided to try and create a simplified version of Unreal's Niagara particle system, 
using Blender's geometry nodes. Of course, Negro is a pretty complicated system, recreating which would probably take months and would require using something more than just geometry nodes. So I figured that I would just focus on my favorite part about it – various forces that you can apply to the particle. For example, this very interesting behavior is emerged from just a combination of point attraction and noise forces. Isn't it fascinating how adding only two relatively simple modules can result in something like this? And so, I started creating these various group nodes, some of which are spawning particles, some are applying different forces to them, some are just modifying various parameters, and others are keeping everything else working. I tried to keep the system as easy to use as possible, and in the end I got a relatively simple but still very entertaining little node set, which I can use to quickly simulate some stuff. Like here, for example, I have a simple tornado with some glowing particles. They do move a little too fast for my liking, but still, it does look rather cool. Here I have the so-called Udipon cubes, which are open using anime to show the insane power of a character's attack. I saw them in one of the Stylized Stations videos and thought that it would be cool to try and recreate them using my small particle system. I never found time to add some rocket textures to the cubes, but uh, that's not really the point here. <clears throat> here is the part where I originally planned to make a little tutorial section on how to use the system, but it turned out to be a little too long and not that easy to follow, so I decided to cut it out. I did, however, include some example particle simulations in the file, so if you really want to use the system or you're just curious on how it works, you should be able to figure it out by reverse engineering the examples. Again, if you like how it turned out and want to play with it yourself, you can find the Blender file with all of these nodes, along with some other stuff from this video, in my Discord server. For completely free, of course. Alright, this was quite a fun ride. I will surely use geometry nodes and their simulation system more in the future for game dev and video production. And also, I hope that I managed to get you interested in this too, as this was kind of the objective of the video. If you liked this episode of I don't really know what to do with the channel, so I will just make some random game dev and 3D graphics related stuff, make sure to check out other videos on my channel and join me on my streams. I stream both on YouTube and Twitch. So subscribe not to miss something cool and I will see you next time. Cheers!